So in this video, I'm going to give you some tips for how you can make sure that the measurements and the uploads that you create for Tracebook have a much higher chance of being accepted and you have a much lower chance of having to go back and redo it if you follow these guidelines. So with the updated version of the measurement procedure on page 10, there is now a pre-flight checklist. And all I did on the upload form was basically summarize the pre-flight checklist with these bullet points because this is what we as moderators do after you make an upload and so if you just do the same thing then you can basically be your own moderator before the official moderators take a look at it so when you make an upload to tracebook the first thing we do is find something to compare it to uh, we look on tracebook and see if someone has already uh, made a the same upload and then we'll have something to compare it to um, but often that's not the case, and so we go out looking for manufacturer information, either a spec sheet or a GLL file. Best case scenario, we can find a GLL file, we can export that, and then we can put both of those into uh, the same graph, maybe an audio analyzer, maybe just an Excel spreadsheet or something, but we might get something like this. And then we say, okay, well, manufacturer says it should look like this in blue, your measurement looks like this in yellow, so looks like there may be something going on here. What can we do? How can we work together to figure out what the situation is here and see what we are always trying to do is make sure that there's not something that you're doing wrong in terms of aim or placement or however your audio analyzer set up, something like that. We want to make sure that we are um, as authentically as possible characterizing um, these loudspeakers and getting actionable data. This is not actionable data. It's, it's way off here in this upper high frequency area here from what the manufacturer says it would be. And, and in this case, we actually discovered that there was a change in just the orientation of the loudspeaker. And so it took some work to, to get to that point and figure that out. Okay. You can do that on your own though, before you just make an upload and hope that it works. If you go to the manufacturer website, well, number one, check Tracebook to see if someone's already measured that speaker, and then you'll have something, something to compare it to. Uh, and then number two, go to the manufacturer website, check their spec sheet, uh, see if they have a GLL file you can download, and then you'll have a comparison. And you could load that into your audio analyzer ahead of time. That way, as you are measuring your loudspeaker, you can get real-time feedback that says, I'm doing this correctly, or... I have the proper aim and everything's set up correctly. So this is probably the biggest, best recommendation we can give is you need some kind of comparison before you get started, if possible. Okay, number two, I have compared my high frequency response to a spot check measurement made away from the floor. So this is something we just used to sort of casually uh, recommend if it didn't look right. And so if people had to go back and check something, we would recommend this to them. But now we're recommending that people do this every time. And I discovered that this was really helpful when I was teaching a group of DIY speaker builders um, because those guys don't have any spec sheets, right? They're building something for the very first time. So they have nothing to compare it to, uh, especially if they're doing, you know, uh, a custom box or building their own horns or something like that. They really don't have much to compare it to. So what we figured out that we had to do every time is do a spot check. So I'm calling it a spot check. We're calling it a spot check to avoid, you know, relationship with, with other terms that have specific meanings, but it's pretty simple. Basically you just put your speaker up on a case or a stand, basically get it away from the floor. And then you're going to measure in close. How close is not super important, but what's important is that you're on axis and that you were, getting all of the high frequency response that that speaker is supposed to be giving you. And then what you're going to end up with is a target in the high frequencies. That way, when you put your speaker back on the ground and you're doing your ground plane measurement and you're aiming that speaker so that it's on axis with the microphone, then again, you have a comparison. So you can see a trend here. We're always looking for some kind of comparison. You never want to be just measuring abstract data right? You always need some kind of comparison. This is really the difference between beginner sound engineers, beginner users of audio analyzers, and intermediate users, is that 
as intermediate users, we understand that we always need some kind of comparison. You never want to be just looking at data in the abstract. Um, which, by the way, this is the whole point of Tracebook, is all of those times that someone posts an image online on Facebook or somewhere and says, am I doing it right? It's data in the abstract. How can we know if you're doing it right? We have nothing to compare it to. So now we have Tracebook. Okay, so a little tangent there. Um, but again, this is especially important if you cannot, for some reason, get manufacturer data or some kind of hard evidence to compare your data to, then this is at least uh, a better way to start. Put your speaker you know, up on a stand, take a measurement close in, and then you have something that is representative in the high frequencies. Okay, what's the last item? I have a photo showing the microphone speaker in nearby boundaries. Um, the biggest thing that stops people is in this area is either they don't have a photo at all, uh, which is going to exclude your measurement immediately, or they've taken their photo too close. A lot of times, and I do, I have this problem too, I'm right next to the speaker, and so I take a measurement, I'm sorry, I take a photo of the speaker and the microphone, and that looks great, and we can see the distance of the microphone, great. But what's really helpful is when you step back farther, and we can see the walls all around the speaker, that way, when we look at your data, then we can maybe make some guesses about why things are happening. And so if we see some ripple in this area, we might say, well, it looks like you're too close to a wall. But if you're too close in with the photo and it's cropped and we can't see anything around it, then it's hard for us to say anything about the environment that you took the measurement in. And this is what we're doing as moderators. We're always trying to help people figure out, like, could this be improved? And, and that's one of the quickest ways we can figure that out is if there's a nice photo that shows us the environment all around the speaker. Okay, so these are just some tips for not only getting really great measurements for Tracebook, but just you and your own work, uh, everything that you're doing with an audio analyzer. So I hope this has been helpful. Let me know what questions come up for you, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.